Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're on um, week five of the uh, algorithms. So uh, just going through these algorithms and um, for the last two weeks, um, there weren't really um, algorithms that we had to solve. So we're in module nine and we'll just go through and we're gonna start with character count. Okay, so we have everything open. We don't need the inspector open that much. We can kind of, yeah, we can. We can just keep it like that. And we have character count here. So um, looking at the README, uh, it wants us to um, create a new object, loop through each character in the given string, and create a new key for each character in the string. The value of the character's key should be the number of times it appears in the string. So for instance, we have hello world, and it should give us a string um, like this, including um, exclamations and spaces. So, okay, let's go ahead and give that a try. Um, so there's one way that um, kind of already comes to mind. Um, I've used this a couple of places when I code. So I'm just going to share that right away. So we have a string, so let's... Um, just get some information here just to make sure that uh, we get what we want. So she sells seashells by the seashore. Okay, and we want an object. So let's create a new object of count just like that. And we're just going to iterate through um, string, but in order to iterate through it, we need an array. So we're going to uh, create this array for it. So let uh, string array equal um, string dot split and now if we console log string array uh, there's our split array so now we are going to iterate through this and we are going to basically um, create a new object um, if the letter is coming up for the first time and we're setting the value of that to basically one and then any incoming object is going to be set to um, an increment of that uh, value at that key. So the typical way I would do this is I would use the built-in function, which is dot for each. And then we want the element, the arrow function. Whoops, don't know how that happened. Um, and now we're going to do count at element. Uh, it already kind of knows what I want, where um, it based on my code and when we're just going to do plus one. So what this is doing is as we iterate through the string array here, we're uh, setting an object of count at the element equal to the value at count element or zero if it doesn't exist plus one. So if the value doesn't exist, it's going to set it equal to zero and it's going to declare it as a new value. So now if I console log count, C O U N T, we get eight, four, seven, seven, four. Uh, basically we get something like this. And if we return count, we pass the test case. So this is a um, set of code I've been using for a while that I kind of um, learned through just solving algorithms and you're going to come come by that a lot where as you just solve more and more algorithms you find one that um, has a lot of use cases and this is a great one just to you know sift through information. So let me think if there's another way we could do this without depending on a for each. Um, let's kind of do the same thing except with a for loop. So um, again, we want our count and we also want our string array equals string dot split there. And let's get our console log going so we can keep an eye on what's going on. Okay, so we have our console log here. So let's go ahead and do our for there i equals zero count length but we want string array dot length i plus plus. And um, so this autofill feature is called tab nine. Um, kind of really, really good at going through and filling in 
all right the code we need um it based off of what you've coded before so it already kind of knew that i wanted to do this um so tab nine check it out it's pretty cool so uh now we need to iterate through this and if there exists a value um which has never existed before we need to basically uh create an object so um if count at array at string array string array i then you're going to do count a string array i plus plus else uh count string array equals one now let's console log count that should be it yeah so this is just like your typical for loop there's no for each it's not a one-liner like this um pretty straightforward it's, it's just kind of using logic where we check if there exists a value here, then um, all we're going to do is increment the value. Otherwise, we're just going to set that value equal to one, extremely similar to this, just uh, using a for loop. So um, let's return that, return count, and that should pass. Um, I guess another way you could really do it if you um, want to get kind of fancy with it uh, so let's try something else. Let's do a third solution. I'm going to copy these two lines here. We're going to need those lines. And now we have a string array with string. Let's get our console log back of string array. And there's our string ar array. And if we sort, we get that. Um, okay. So if we iterate through this, um, Basically, uh, once we reach a point where the value is no longer equal to the previous value, um, we can push in, we can create an element that way. So th um, that way we're creating, once we, are, we know for sure that there are no longer any more elements of that uh, value that exists. So um, let's do that. So string array dot sort that will sort everything and now again for their i equal to zero the i plus plus cool so we got our for loop started and let's just go back to console log string array and now while string array at i equals string array at i minus one, we are going to do a um, there i there count equals zero, and we uh, count val equals zero. Oh, we can even get even. We don't even need the variable at this point. We can just depend on the length of the string. So we can do while well, string array i. Um, uh, so if we'll do an if statement, so if string array at i is does not equal what the previous value is, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do so the value at i should be equal to the actual value of how many exist. So we're going to do count at string array of i equals i yeah and then constant we're going to console log count hopefully this works okay we get zero of those okay and we're going to start at one actually okay Um, 
No, we we need a count value. Let count value equals zero. And then at the end we will do we have to make this like that and then count value plus plus and then if set equal to count value yeah we set it equal to count value and then count value equals zero okay that's not going to pass because um let's console log string array at i and string array at i minus one a and previous string array at i minus one equals that so I think we got it. And then the only issue is, is the final value. So the final value is not being picked up, which is uh, line 41. So let's console log string array, which is Y. And then is there a Y here? No. So Okay, um, we need to figure out a way to kind of deal with this. Um, a check. So if um, string array at string array dot length minus one, we need to check on what happens if we reach the end of it. So, oh, well, okay, so we can just do. Um, string array string array dot length minus one equals uh, count val and now we should have a y in here uh no no string array i'm sorry count 36 should be y not 36 Oh, 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 okay, so we need to set this equal to the element we want, which is string array. There you go. That should do it. And now there's our Y. There's that. Um, we are dealing with everything else. Cool. That's fine. We have our count value. Um, Get rid of the extra spacing, now we just return count. There you go. Okay, so that was the other solution. We have an extra console log in here. Um, we have three solutions to one problem. Super happy with how this turned out. Um, the first one is from here. Uh, very straightforward, takes advantage of the or element in JavaScript as well as the for each and just goes through um, the uh, split string as an array and just checks the value and if there exists a value already it's gonna, just going to set it equal to that plus one or it's going to initialize the value and then add one to that and then return it. The second way is exactly the same way except with a for loop where we check if um, there exists there that, that value if there is then we're just going to increment on it and then otherwise we're going to create it and set it equal to one. Um, the final way is um, a little roundabout, but it um, it basically sorts the values and uh, checks uh, once the previous value no longer matches the current value, um, it will uh, set the count value. I really wanted to take into advantage the the length. And we kind of can do that, but we would have to reinitialize this every time. We would need to basically uh, split, uh, get rid of the end portion of that array. And that is a little too much. But um, yeah, it's just an additional va variable here. But um, that's what these plus plus and a zero takes into account.
also. So let's move on to uh, the next algorithm, which is the product product of the largest two. Okay, so for the next algorithm, we have to get the project product of the largest two. Um, you will write code to create a function, and it will return uh, largest two numbers in an array and returns the number product of both of them. Um, find the largest and the second largest in the given array. Return the product of the largest and second largest. See the following array example. Okay, um, we can do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, look at our data. Also got log array. Okay, and maybe we can't see the data. No problem. Um, so let's think this through. So the quickest way I can think of doing this is array dot sort uh, a b uh, a minus b. So we sort the array. Then we return array um, minus one times array minus two, and that's the quickest way to solve it. Um, given that array, we um, sort it basically, and the last two elements will always return um, the greatest value. And as for this one, um, the greatest ones were negative one and negative two. So we, we return two. So, okay, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so this is the quickest, most straightforward solution. Um, if we were not to sort the array, um, we would need to go through, uh, assume the highest value and then find the next highest value. Um, so to do that, uh, if we were to do it in one go, um, I guess let's do a largest value equals an empty array, and we're going to set that equal to that, let, and then we're going to go through and for fair i equal zero of that, and we're going to assume um, that the first value is the largest, um, and then we're going to set this equal to, we're going to set this equal to, set this to 2, and we're going to do array at 0, and then array at 1, okay? And this is assuming that there are at least two elements, so, um, if there wasn't, you would need to do some additional um, validation to see if array.length is less than 2, then you just uh, return the 2 value. Or you basically return nothing. If it is equal to 2, then you just return the multiplication, the uh, summation of it, or the product of it. Um, so let's do this. Um, if uh, array at i is greater than um, uh, largest value 0. So we need to make sure that we only get one instance of it. And then in here, we check if array of i is greater than uh, largest value of 1. We're going to set array of 0. Um, Largest value of 0 equals array i. Otherwise, we can do largest value of 0 equals array i. I wish I could see this and then return reduce uh, largest value dot reduce um, previous next. Previous and next. Okay, um, the number 966 was given. Um, so, what were the values? So, also dot log largest value. Not letting me see the console. 
Oh, here we go. Um, so this is 42, 42, and 42 is... Okay, uh, there's another way we can do this. I really don't like this way, but why not? Let's just, let's just do it. Um, so we're going to go through and we're going to assume that one. And then uh, if... Um, If largest value at uh, at zero is less than array at i, then uh, largest value of zero equals array i. Then what we want to do is at the end, if uh, largest value if uh, i equals Array dot length minus one. We want to delete um, the array at array at index of largest value dot index of the largest value at zero. And then if we console log largest value. Uh, an array, we are given um, an empty. So uh, the first value is 42. If largest value, then set array to that. So my question is, why is this still considered console.log array i? Array dot index of cool. Okay, so now um, and then array dot filter the true values array equals so let max equal array at zero if max And we're starting at one this time. If max is less than, uh, then we're gonna push into this. Largest value that push, uh, that push, uh, raise of i. Um, I should still produce the same values. Uh, and then 8, 15, 16, 23, 42, if max is, if max equals array of i, and if we console log max along the way, we get, um, it determines 8, 15, that's a really bad example, <laughs> um, so it's going to assume the whole time that negative one. Okay, then we're going to uh, then uh, array dot uh, largest value dot push array sub uh, max. And then we are going to delete the array at array index of the value. That's fine. Index of we can do you max and now we can set max equal to we can bring this in and bring that in and then we can return largest value dot reduce now all we have to do is set a while loop while largest value dot length is less than two we will run this okay we will run this again and again and again And now let's go ahead and console log largest value. Oh, wait, it passed, but um, it gets a super roundabout way to do this. Two lines versus all this. Um, so what's basically happening here is, I think that's the only console log, is um, while this length is less than uh, uh, the amount of products we need, um, we need to basically 
set the max value to the initial value. Uh, uh, let's do this. Let's do, yeah, set I, let I equal zero, and then we'll set this to, no, I have to use a different value, J. Let's set this to J. And then we'll set this to three dot length minus one minus array dot length. We'll do uh, zero plus j. Zero plus one plus j. And then um, now the iterations overall should be less. Um, again, this is still the best way to do it. It sorts it. Um, sometimes it almost takes twice as long or longer than that. Um, for the first example, because we have to iterate through the whole array and it's the last two. So that's like the worst case scenario. And then the second one, um, we can see that the uh, solution is comes up for as much sooner. So, uh, yeah, not, not the best iterate, uh, not the best solution, but, um, another solution. So let's move on to the next, um, next algorithm. Uh, I'm sure there's a, another way to do this, but I think, uh, this was enough for all this when you can just do it in two lines. So let's go on to the next one. So for the um, final algorithm, it's a algorithm called camel case. Um, in this file, you'll write code in the body of camel case, return a camel case version of the given string. Um, a string is in camel case when there are no spaces between the words. Um, okay, so this solution, this particular algorithm is very near dear to my heart because I had a uh, interview with this exact question and I forgot how to solve it. I solved it for them completely correct the first time, but the second time I completely forgot how I got the solution. And about like 10 minutes after the interview, I was able to magically figure it out because the pressure is off of you and when you're in that interview process. So, um, like, yeah, let's solve this two different ways at least. So that's the goal. Um, the first way is we're going to basically, uh, we need to, we need, we need an array. So let a uh, string array equal string not split. Uh, we won't split on that. We will split there. And if we cons, well, no, we do need to split on space, but, uh, console log string array. Uh, yeah, we need to s do it on space. Cool. And, um, now we need to do, um, uh, for there i equals zero, for i is less than string array dot blank. I'm just gonna write this out, even though tab nine is doing it for me. It's good to get into into the practice of writing it out. So we need to go ahead and start at um, zero. So if i equal zero, then what we're gonna do is, uh, and you know what? Just to save time, we're going to set everything to lowercase ahead of time. So now. Um, we should, if we comment this out, we should get lowercase everything string dot to lowercase. Yep. Everything's lowercase that saves time. And the best part is we don't even need the first condition anymore. So now that that's dealt with, we can start at the next condition, which is there. So for each one of these, we need to split this and set the first letter to uppercase. So to do that, we will do exactly um, as said. So since we're starting at index one, um, we can just do uh, 
string array at i dot split on every character um and we will set uh string array at i equals um that and now we have an array of, of arrays which is perfect and then we want at string array i zero equals string array i zero dot to uppercase so if we look at it now we have rain and all that and now if we look at it again, we have everything in the first index to uppercase and then um, string array at i uh, equals string array. Oh, we don't even need to do that. String array i dot join uh, equals string array. We do need to do that at i. And then we just return return string red join. Yep, that was it. That was <laughs> the coding problem that stumped me the second time because of nerves. So keep working on those algorithms, even if you're pretty confident in it. Um, let's see if I can't get this solved a different way. Um, so this was the only real solution I could think of. It's short, it's sweet, um, and uh, we don't really need to overthink it for this one. Um, so basically, we uh, split the array, and then we set it. We set the um, string to lowercase before we split it um, uh, amongst the spaces, um, and then once we split it amongst the spaces, we will go through from all the elements at index one and onward because we know index zero is supposed to be lowercase and we will just split that index of the array um, we will set it to uppercase um, just the first value and then we will join it again before we join the entire string array back together so um yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope this guys this uh video helped you guys out with the algorithms take care